Hello everybody out there. Um, we're waiting for you to find us, whoever wants to join us tonight, when we're going to talk about the Zigeuner Wahrsagekarten or the Gypsy cards. Right now nobody is here yet, so um, we're still going to wait a bit and uh, do some small talk probably in German because, ah, Karen is there. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Karen. Great uh, that you're here. Um, can you hear us well? Is everything fine with this? Great. Very good. So um, there are a few people there right now. We're going to see how many people are showing up tonight. And if not, this video is going to be recorded. Hello, Jasna. Nice to see you. <laughs> And um, as you can see, I'm talking. Today is Women's Day, so we decided that I'm going to do the talking and my lovely husband is, has to be quiet. <laughs> we just saw yesterday uh, the fourth series of The Crown and looked how Margaret Thatcher and her husband are together. And we thought this might be quite a good idea to style ourselves. <laughs> So anyway, um, the problem is that I am not the gypsy expert, but Rowe is and Rowe's English is not so uh, well that uh, he can do all the talking. So we uh, did uh, sit to set together and decided what we're going to do. And uh, if you have questions, I need Rowe here because he has to answer the questions. I'm not the expert. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to translate. Exactly. I'm going to translate. Sorry. So uh, as we said, we're going to talk about the visual light motifs of the gypsy cards. Um, as you all probably know, the gypsy cards, unlike the Lenormands or the Kippers, don't have any numbers and uh, they have names but uh, they can't be put into a proper order because there are six languages on the gypsy cards hi marlies um and so it is uh, you can't bring them into an alphabetical order since every language has different words for the cards and still People really would like to have a kind of matrix or work with houses or have a kind of coding for the gypsy cards. And when we wrote our first, no, our second book 12 years ago, yeah. you can see it there. <laughs> we decided uh, that we would like to, to find a kind of matrix. And we thought about uh, either we can try astrological correspondences. We're going to make a different uh, live show about this later or you might be using colors. Uh, we're not going to talk about this tonight either. And the third thing we came up with is we might be working with light motifs. So if we're working with light motifs, it's not so much uh, uh, useful to do this when you're doing a grand tableau, because uh, there it's more about uh, um, um, corresponding, uh, what did you say, which word? Nicht orakeln, sondern nee, ko uh, um, korrespondieren. Nee, nicht korrespondieren, sondern combinations. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, Karen, the book is not available in English, but we're going to do more and more sections and translate them into English. It's all uh, we're preparing for this and hopefully we can do this in autumn. Um, so the Grand Tableau is more about um, combining the different cards. But if you, for example, do daily cards or do small spreads, you might want to look at the cards in a different way than just uh, use them as um, a whole image and look more closely at the images. And then you get the light motifs. And um, like this, you might learn even more about each single card. The light motifs came up for us because we are more working with tarot or I'm more working with tarot than with the oracle cards. And when I look at an image, I just go into the symbolism. So that's uh, what we decided to, to look at. Um, yes, Karen, I'm going to uh, tell you when once it's available. <laughs> so 
Um, as you can see, we have uh, provided you with a little presentation and we have here the four things you can watch out for in Gypsy cards as leitmotifs and that is objects, places, characters or conditions. I'm sure once you have uh, gone with us through the presentation, you will come up with your own motives. Um, we are not going to show all of them anyway, because it's going probably to take too much time. It's just to get you an idea um, what we were thinking about when we did this. Right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> I think we will start right now. <laughs> Let's do this then. <laughs> So we ordered um, the cards into different sections. The presentation is not that big. I hope you can still see um, the images, but then uh, perhaps uh, you rewatch this video with your cards on the desk and then you can pay more attention to the, de to the details. So the first object we come across, or one of the objects we come across in the gypsy cards are columns. And, um, oh no, sorry, my presentation, I'm, I'm at the wrong presentation. It's not columns, it's banks. <laughs> so uh, here are the three cards where we have banks uh, on the image. And a bank obviously is for recovering, for may having a break, for uh, it can be a meeting point or it can be a place where you accidentally meet somebody, have a conversation or communication with somebody. So it's a place of rest, but also of communication and openness. And uh, the three cards we show here, they all have um, something to do with kind of a floating feelings, floating, uh, floating states of mind. So we have the sweetheart card where this lady is waiting probably for her lover on a bank and she looks kind of uh, a little bit like sleeping beauty and uh, waiting to be kissed awake. Then we have uh, the thought card and uh, he is kind of uh, waiting for ideas. Then we have sadness and sadness, uh, she seems to be mulling over something. Perhaps she needs to recover from something she experienced or she's just melancholic for whatever reason. And all these cards um, with the banks, they have this uh, floating feeling. Yeah? So it says. <laughs> Okay, um, please, whenever you have your own ideas or have questions, that just put them in the comments and um, uh, we will talk about it. Thank you, Marlies. Yeah, we think so too. It's quite interesting. We don't know where it's going to get us, but as I said, we really would like to find a matrix yeah. for the gypsy cards. Yeah. So, um, next uh, sheet, please. The next sheet is trees. We have, as you can see, loads of trees in the gypsy cards. Um, trees generally are for, oh, it's not a bank, but a bench. Uh, Karen, I was too lazy to translate. <laughs> I, I thought bank can't be right, but I was just today too lazy to translate this word. I don't know why. Yes, I made mistakes mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> <laughs> My perfect nice little okay. woman. <laughs> anyway, trees are correct because in German it's Baum. Um, and trees are about growth, they are about fruitfulness, they are about vitality, longevity. Um, you can, they can support you, you can lean against them. Mm. It's a connection to nature. And loads of cards have different types of trees. And I think it's quite worthwhile to look at these cards um, and think about what energy level do these cards have because of the trees? And uh, is there a potential, a certain growing potential in these cards because of these trees? So, for example, just to pick out a few, um, both or, or, or the three main characters, the lover, uh, so the sweetheart, the lover, and the 
in German, on the card it says officer, but I think it's it should be a. It's, it's not correct. Yeah, it should be a military person. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it's very strong to translate the it, what, what's in German the office officer. What's the verb in, in, in English? Military person. Yeah, military person. Lieutenant. But, yeah, but this is too strong to, to, to print it on the on the card. So I think uh, they have to look and they took take one of the the, the silliest word they found. Exactly. But Officer is, 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 is not correct. See, but it's on the card. Women's Day, he said he wouldn't talk, but now he talks. <laughs> You look to me and I know it's it's a question and give me the answer and Sorry. I gave you the Sorry. answer. Back to the subject. Um, Karen, we're going to answer your question in a second. So, um, especially lovers, sweetheart and the military person or lieutenant or whatever yeah. he's called, Sorry. they are all in a park situation and have trees connected to them and they are quite... Uh, especially for the men, they are quite upright and straight. So this probably says something about their character. Um, we have uh, the thief where in the background there is this park and the park we don't have here uh, as place. But uh, from Lenormand, we know what the park means. It's uh, uh, openness, it's being in society or whatever. And it's quite interesting that we can see a park uh, in on the thief card uh, in, in the distance. Um, we have the death card where we can see a, a rotten tree uh, on it. Uh, perhaps it's uh, the rotten park. What do we know? And uh, um, as you can see, there are many other examples for tree situations and it's worthwhile to look at the trees. Now, Karen asks whether we count the tree in the picture in the anger card. Very perceptive of you, Karen. Perhaps if you put uh, the next uh, uh, sheet on. As you can see, we said pictures are <laughs> a light motif, and uh, just today we again looked at these pictures on the cards: baby, melody, and anger. And in all in all of these three images, pictures, you can see trees. So is this to say something about the vitality on the cards, the vitality of the baby, the vitality of the melody person? we can think about this and perhaps there is a connection between the three of them. So um, after the pictures, we have the flowers. There are loads of uh, images with flowers on them and flowers, they stand for beauty, for um, aesthetics, uh, harmony, joy. They can mean uh, an, a reason to celebrate or um, they since they um, easily vanish again. They can show us the um, transience of life and they can be a meaning of telling us to live in the here and now. So all the cards which have flowers on them might be just asking us to, to live in the present could be one reason. Um, we also thought um, that these cards might be connected to love especially because the gypsy deck is very much about love situations so aphrodite and the roses is a very important connection mm. and we also have white flowers for innocence like in the marriage card for example um and i think in the child card there's also a white flower mm. or is it a red no it's a red flower as far as i can see okay yeah, would you say this is the meaning of the flowers? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. It's Women's Day. It's Women's Day, exactly. So um, let's look at the next image. I'm just fighting here with my iPad example. So uh, now we have the columns with which I started out. And columns are also uh, quite often shown in the gypsy cards. We have uh, a column as a symbol for an aid, for support. It can also mean might and power, or um, of course it can also be a phallic symbol. But I think this is not what uh, columns are so much about in the gypsy cards. Um, they seem to be more about uh, all the cards which have um, columns which are the 
ecclesiastic, very strange <laughs> work, word I have to say, the marriage card, sadness, widow and desire. All these cards have something about uh, hope, hopeful states, um, expecting states as, as well, perhaps. And these columns can also mean that the <coughs> above is supposed to be connected to the below. So how to manifest what is above could be an idea how these cards are connected with one another. Okay, so you just put in the questions whenever you have questions, but we continue now um, with places. So I already mentioned that the park is a place where um, many people seem to run around in the gypsy cards. But another place, it's not exactly a place, uh, we didn't know exactly where to put it, but buildings are often shown in the gypsy cards. Either just one building by its own. I don't understand column. Uh, Säule, Malis, Säule. Um, uh, sometimes it's just on their own, these yeah. houses, like in the house card, a very prominent uh, lovely house uh, or in the distance like on the journey card we can see some houses uh, back in the background or we can see the burning house in the um, misfortune card and uh, in falseness and in fiend or enemy i think it's called in english you we can see also houses so houses can be about uh, um, the um, um, sorry I think houses in the gypsy card are mainly about security our basis yes basis is, yeah. is, 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 is our foundation also yeah both of them and perhaps also about ambitions we said so uh, yeah. th that house how it looks can show us what we want to achieve in life. This would be a little bit corresponding to the um, astrological axis of the IC, the immune quality and the MC, the medium quality, Cancer towards uh, Capricorn. So this could be an idea mm -hmm. that it's about ambitions somehow these uh, cards connected with this uh, with, with through houses. Then, of course, we have rooms in the gypsy cards. Some people are out in the open, like the lover and the sweetheart. But uh, many cards are also taking place in rooms. And it's interesting to see how these rooms look like. Do they have windows open? Uh, I think apart from the child, who there's uh, the one card which has no room. I just see the, the hope card it has not a room, but um, some, some we had a little bit uh, uh, problems putting up the presentation because they're so small these cards and you get um, mm. sometimes uh, mixed up with them um the, the baby card has a, a light window while but it's not open it's not open but there's light shining yeah. through right. while in on the malady Different. card mm. we have the closed uh, shutters um it's not a, a sinister situation but for example, if you have the card money, uh, it's quite dark and sinister, this card, even though it's about money. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a strange, perhaps it needs to be some light put into uh, onto the money aspect. Um, then, uh, for example, in the card uh, some money, we have this strange mirror in the middle of the image and uh, what is this mirror supposed to mean is this uh, are we supposed to look into this mirror and see our reflection or something uh, there's a lot of stuff we can gather from rooms which are usually seen as a symbol for our soul or just about our intimacy places where we don't uh, let people in like the female boudoir mm. in uh, what it's called it's a gift right yeah. um, or this uh, situation in Ferdrus which is loss uh, mm. where you have this uh, strange 
a kind of room, could be a living room, could be a, a gaming room, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting to, to sort out these rooms in the gypsy cards. So next place we have is the cemetery. Um, and on the, ce in, in, on the cemetery, uh, or in the cemetery, there are the widow and the widower, obviously, but also the dog from the um, fidelity card. And we have the death card where the skeleton is seen. Uh, it's not necessarily a cemetery, but you kind of associate death and cemetery, I would say. So... <laughs> What are cemeteries about? They are obviously a place of mourning, but also of a, a place of remembering. Um, it's a, usually a place where we can withdraw to when we need a time to contemplate something or um, when we are looking for peace. Though the word, uh, I don't know how, how, where the word cemetery comes from, but in German we have the word Friedhof. Fried can be meaning peace. But Fried, it's actually called because there are walls usually around a cemetery. And this is uh, another German word, which is Befrieden. So actually, I don't know the roots of cemetery. I should look this up somehow. So peaceful, enclosed um, place, the cemetery. And this makes these cards quite um, nice, even though it's about death, for example, because um, they can all mean, mean something like um, change or transformation is in progress. Mm -hmm. um, it can be about letting go. Or when you look at the dog <laughs> lying on the grave, it can be about not being able to let go. Or the widow might not be able to let go. Or the widower, uh, we don't know. Um, and uh, another thing which cemeteries cards might should suggest when you perhaps just draw them uh, as a single card could be getting in contact with your ancestors, for example, could be something, right? Okay, so we have the cemetery and there are other places. I'm sure you find other places uh, yourself. For example, we have also cards on the road. Um, or uh, as I said, the park or whatever, but uh, we now want to show you some characters. Sleeping place, cemetery. Thank you, Monica. I didn't know this. Interesting. Though the Greeks didn't think the people would sleep. They said, uh, thought they would, would live underground and never come up again. But <laughs> <laughs> but very interesting. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, we have characters a lot. Yeah. And um, I just talked to Roy before we went online uh, again, because in the gypsy cards, we don't have many characters. Um, we basically only have the lovers and the sweetheart and the uh, military person. Do we have another? Well, widower and uh, widow. widow. Yeah. Uh, the, child, the baby. And the baby. So these are so. these are the character cards. But actually, um, Roy said so. He does this also in his readings. Sometimes people on cards can become characters in a reading. And uh, we have here some examples which ones can uh, this can these can be, for example, the thief or the guy on the unexpected joy card or the two ladies on the visit card or the dancers on the um, merriment card. Merriment. <laughs> um, or, or even some this woman, uh, or it's mainly a goddess, but also this, she can be a character on the hope card. So you can perhaps, if you're working with significators, just uh, pick out a card which appeals to you and say, this is for that person, the significator or for myself and use it for this. Good. Then we have the gods. And uh, we have <clears throat> the, the, the God cards are, of course, allegories for um, certain states of mind. But perhaps 
again when we use them for daily readings or when uh, one of these cards is very prominent in a um, in a reading it might be asking you to to work with this god or goddess uh, to do some ritual with them or um, these cards could indicate that you're supposed to work with your higher self on some level because it's uh, a higher uh, thing than just a human being so on the hope card we have goddess space she's called in german um, we have the on fortune the card the, the goddess fortune on the message card we have hermes mercury on the constancy card we have just the eye the all-seeing eye of god and on the love card we have amor amor i don't think i use this word very much in english <laughs> I use more eros. <laughs> okay, this is, that's another video. Okay, so this might be also interesting to look into when you're doing your leitmotif research in the gypsy cards. So another um, character section are animals. There are quite a few animals on these cards. Um, animals can mean our passions, our instincts or our needs. And uh, they can also be power animals with which uh, the cards ask us to work for a while in order to, 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 to do something. On the letter, we have the pigeon. On, uh, the, on, on falseness, we have a cat and a snake. Uh, on the house card, we have a swan. On the journey, we have horses. And on the fidelity card, we have dogs. And actually, we already did a gypsy session here on the WDA, uh, in the WDA group, and we talked about the connections of, for example, the fidelity card uh, to old Egyptian myth and on the cat and the, on the falseness card, also connections to old Egyptian myth. And I'm sure you could do this with other cards like horses, uh, pigeons or whatever as well. Uh, if you feel like it. So you can really get a lot out of these very beautiful, very simple cards if you want to get deeper than just doing um, combinations. Um, yeah, the, the next thing, uh, characters, uh, the next character session is about Doppelgänger. Um, <clears throat> Doppelgänger were a very um, important motive in especially German-speaking literature in the early middle 19th century, late Romanticism, which kind of joins uh, or connects into the time when the oracle cards were developed. and. Um, it is uh, often that when we have doppelganger motives, it's often about um, two sides of a person, like most famous example is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And uh, some of these cards, they work uh, on a doppelganger basis. For example, the visit, we have a younger and a more mature woman. In the jealousy card, we have somebody who is in love and the other one who seems to be more in hate. Um, we have uh, yin and yang on the merriment card, or we have an aggressor and a victim on the anger card. The couple who wants to be joined by the priest is again, um, well, that is not so much a double, double ganger card. I think we mixed up something there again, or I mixed it up basically. Um, but the most interesting doppelganger card for me is always loss, where we have these two guys, one in a white suit, one in a black suit, one is winning, one is losing. And this is uh, very much like a Dostoevsky novel, who was a, um, a gamer and who already uh, as well wrote doppelganger stories. So I think this is worthwhile to look into more, the doppelganger Maybe. motif. Maybe we don't know it. 
he isn't black, maybe he's the devil, and she wants and love. Ah, do you mean that the, the black guy who is supposed to lose is the winner in the end? Ah, ah interesting. Yeah, maybe. So it would, gypsy cards. It, it would be a bit like the, the, the Five of Swords in Tarot, that, where we have no winner and no loser. No. Here you have uh, one loser, but you, we don't know it who's the loser in the last. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> he, he have one of the best cards in his hand. We don't know it. It's only what we see. So this is how we start writing our books always. We have an idea and then, <laughs> then uh, we try to both uh, talk through it and come up with uh, sometimes a bit strange ideas <laughs> about, uh, like with the gypsy cards. In uh, the book we just published, um, we really try to describe these cards on a very symbolic level. Like we would write loads about the lost card, for example, what the symbolism is about. Uh, in this card. Okay. Um, the then now we have conditions, and uh, one condition. Well, it's not. Uh, we didn't really know how to to call this, but uh, work is an issue in some cards. There is not a work card in the gypsies, and uh, I know that some people use the. Um, uh, all seeing eye is a yeah. working card. Um, Rowie, he always uses the house as a working card. That's uh, how he learned it. And to me, this how makes a lot of sense, especially in Corona times. It's the best <laughs> working card. Um, <laughs> but we have working people on the car in the cards. So in the anger card, we have. Um, an apprentice and his uh, employer. We have uh, a fireman or fireman working on the um, uh, miss. Uh, I forgot how it's called in English. The miss miss, miss. <laughs> miss fortune card. Miss fortune card. Yeah. Ah. And uh, on the um, journey, we have a coachman driving the the coach. So subtly it still shows these cards still show though they were probably invented for rich ladies uh, who were bored uh, that there is work and perhaps we can use these cards for uh, working situations um, or these cards mean that we need to grow our personality needs to grow more and develop more become we need to work on our personality oh, could be something uh, these cards might be worth uh, uh, might be about okay then we have the next it's also not a very good word condition here it's polarity we already had the doppelganger motif and polarity kind of um, is a bit like the same but uh, very often we have a contrast of black and white in the gypsy cards. Uh, we already mentioned the lost card where it's quite obvious. Even in the background in the lost card, there's a, um, a lighter and a darker coat hanging from uh, the wall. And there is a dark side because of the, cur the, the coats and a light side. The dark guy is sitting under uh, a light. So quite of a mixture of polarity issues in, in this card. It's quite quite subtle, I think. No? That's correct. And so th this is one of, of my idea. He's in our in, in our eyes, he's the loser. Mm -hmm. But this is correct. Because he has the light. He's mm. in the light. Okay. Maybe he's the devil and he brings us to the light. We don't know it. Another couple dressed in black and white is, of course, on the um, marriage card. Um, we have the death card, white dress of the skeleton, dark background. The other way around is on the judge card, dark judge, bright uh, background. We have the fire uh, polarity, polarity to the water of the fireman. Um, we have uh, the 
this dark guy on the enemy card and this quite light uh, street uh, he is uh, standing nearby um, in the lovers uh, the, the the love card we have this black strange uh, circle in which Cupid oh, armor it's a black, it's is a black hole yeah kind of a black hole isn't it <laughs> love is a black hole <laughs> yeah we don't know how how you get your love <laughs> and um we have in malady also the, she's all laid out in white but in the background it's, uh, black. it's black black white again a little mm -hmm. bit like a column and the same is with the curtains of the child uh, of baby. the baby with white curtains but there's also something black yeah. black curtain hanging just right behind uh, the baby's head so mm -hmm. that's quite interesting um the next condition we have is resting we already talked about the bench in the beginning and um, there are quite a few cards which are about rex resting so about calming down it's about tranquility about uh, recovery reflection um, and these cards we are shown they are not so much about something is happening outside but it's a development inside inner change and perhaps some of these people on the cards need to need to learn serenity it's a lesson they're supposed to, to grasp that could be an idea for these cards yeah i think this is pretty clear we, we mentioned most of these cards before um yeah the last one we want to show you tonight the last light motif is uh, beyond time and space and of course the god cards are here um an issue but um, um also the death card uh, and something like the letter or the message is not really um uh, these cards are kind of beyond our control and thus um, make symbolize something um, we can't uh, do uh, uh, anything about and this is what that, why we thought it's uh, not in time and space it's uh, it can happen anytime yeah it's out it's out of time and space yeah exactly all of those yeah I mean that's basically about it. The way, that's what we have for you tonight as uh, ideas. And uh, if you have any questions, it would be a good thing to ask them now. Um, perhaps you have your own ideas. Um, we also would, of course, like to know how you like this idea, um, whether you find this useful to work with. Um, when do you use this usually? Sorry? Wann benutzt du, äh, arbeitest du mit den Leitmotiven? Das passiert intuitiv. Hm. Das kann man nicht sagen, ab Punkt X bis zu Punkt Y. Das passiert in, in der Beratung. Das, hm. kann man, das kann man nicht so äh, ad hoc sagen. Thank you, Jasna. We also think it's really interesting. Um, uh, I just asked Rowie when he uses Leitmotivs and um, it's kind of, uh, he says, I do it intuitively. I think because actually we went through these light motifs 13 years ago. Yeah. It was just just before our son was born. Yeah. Um, our first book. Yeah, the second book. It was the second book. It was uh, Liebe Glück Erfolg? Nee, das andere. Großbuch. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Um, and... Uh, I think because we looked at this then, it kind of went into our mm. um, repertoire of uh, reading yeah. cards. And I'm quite sure that you're going, that you are using it, but don't really think about um, it anymore. I, 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 it's, it's always uh, uh, which question I get, which, which is the, the readings. So uh, maybe I, I do it uh, instinctively, geez, sometimes I, I, I lose it. So it's, I can't tell you on this time you have to need it mm. Mind. Mm. no that's that's not correct yeah yeah it's something something to play with once when you do your own readings and especially as i said when you 
learn the gypsy cards, do uh, daily readings or whatever, I think then it's an excellent way to yeah. do it. Um, uh, Marlis says that she really likes it because she thinks these cards are dark and chaotic <laughs> and now you have a kind of structure system. Uh, I, yeah. I think it's, it's very interesting in the time you learned the card in the first time. So it's very interesting to see about it, to learn it. What, what can you see? What can you learn? What can you uh, give back to in, in the readings? Mm -hmm. So in the first time. Um, yeah. Later, I think you see other things in, in the readings. Yeah. And, and Karen says she lose, uh, this, uses the symbolism often in my readings. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I obviously would do this always because I can't uh, do without symbolism. That's why I find it so hard to do oracle cards because I, I can never look at just a picture. I, I immediately start to analyze the picture. <laughs> It's a bit uh, of a shame. It's a different. Yeah. Uh, I also first notice the energy of the card, what colors are there. Exactly, Yasna. Yeah. We also think that colors are really, really um, very important. And the keywords, uh, I guess, Yasna, is uh, what you're learning, what you're kind of uh, memorizing and then come up with the keywords. Yeah. That's the best thing to do first to have some keywords correct but also i think if you um, i think if you dive deep into a card perhaps even meditate about a card that's what we uh, often do in tarot and uh, experience what looks uh, uh, the card behind the frame if you do something with this with the gypsy cards i'm sure you also get very interesting results this doesn't mean that you don't do the typical combination stuff anymore after this but it just gets you a deeper grasp of the cards and an understanding of the world described of the uh, of the gypsies uh, in, in the gypsy world basically the gypsy card world <sighs> Yeah. We have a very big issue in Germany right now with uh, gypsy, the word, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, quite hard <laughs> to publish a book on the cards right now. I don't know how it's in uh, other countries, but um, we really have to be careful how we frame our words these days. Um, when symbolism is known, it is so nice to use the knowledge to in the cards. Yes, Janneke, I've, I think this is exactly uh, what we mean. Does anybody of you use astrology in the gypsy cards? I wonder. Um, because uh, we kind of uh, have an idea how it might work, but we're not totally convinced. Um, but if you find this interesting, of course, we can do yeah. next month something on that's, the astrology that's, that's ideas we have. Um, and perhaps you can help us uh, discover more about the astrology there, because, as I said, we're not totally sure about it. Um, yeah, so we will. Um, thank you, Marlies. If you don't if you don't do this, um, let's try and find out something about it. We as I said, we have some ideas and um, we need to do another presentation for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? But on this time, it's no woman's day. Okay, next time Bring you up. will talk? <laughs> yes, it will okay. be quite funny. Okay, so uh, next time you will have a, um, you will have a, a talk uh, by Quatsch. both of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, Mali. So, well, in, in Taro, we, it's quite easy because we have the correspondences given by the Golden Dawn mainly, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you can use astrology also with the gypsy cards because um, the Golden Dawn invented these uh, correspondences uh, themselves as well. They were not given in the beginning. I'm very sorry, my phone is ringing even though I put it out never mind <clears throat> um but actually we are done if you don't have any more questions 
and um, I hope, we hope, you enjoyed this. We hope. Yeah, I said we yeah, hope. Yeah, I hope. My lovely, nice wife. <laughs> I think um, then sometimes I use astrology in the cards. It is for me more information about planets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Janneke, that's that's what we think. And if, if you know a bit of astrology, um, you can look deeper into the cards as well, because you have some keywords for astrology, you have some color information, you have some light motifs now you can look at and it gives you more and more depth and perhaps one of these days we all discover the matrix of the gypsy cards. Could be. Um, yes, thank you that you all liked it. We liked it too. We are very happy we did yeah. this. We were a bit scared to present you this because Perhaps it's... it's uh, Perfect. Yeah, it was it was perfect. So um, we still um, thank you, Brand. Yeah, I'm, we're looking forward to your feedback. Um, we still need to coordinate our English performances. Okay. <laughs> she performed and I was looking. Yes, but you do this very lovely. <laughs> yes, okay, so that's what I, can. I have a great evening i think it's monday i have stopped counting which day we're in on wednesday michelle we will, will be going live uh, you know um i organize the live talks right now it was a bit slow in march sorry about this it's i think people are on holidays a lot but we will have uh, michelle and i'm lining up some other talks for uh, middle end of March and in April we will continue. Plus you have this great uh, show on the 20th of March, I think, uh, for, for the World Spiritual Association, I think. So loads of stuff to come up. So have a very nice evening. And um, thank you very much. We will be back with the gypsies and astrology. <laughs> Bye. Bye.